Hi, this is Grivelly again and today I um, would like to shoot a video that I'm really looking forward to and it's a video that I've been uh, planning to shoot for quite a while now and uh, this video is going to be part of uh, my Essential Fountain Pen Guide series. Um, a video or blog uh, article guide series that have to do with different things around fountain pens. and. Uh, um, the, the, the part that I want to shoot today um, is um, something that we might want to call my um, top five entry level fountain pens. So if you are new to fountain, the fountain pen world and you are considering of buying fountain pens, uh, considering to buy fountain pens, you might uh, sooner or later come across the question of asking yourself which is the best fountain pen for me to take? What what fountain pen uh, should I buy? And um, now they are of course in one euro or one dollar stores. There are two dollar or three euro or one euro fifty fountain pens available, but uh, these are most likely not the ones that you that you would want to use when you just new to the new to the to the game because um, those will most likely not really give you an, a nice fountain pen experience and they will rather like you know push you off or pull you off instead of attracting you to to continue losing using fountain pens so what i want to do in this video review here now and uh, our video guide here and it's not going to really be a review of of those fountain pens it's it's really going to be more an introduction to those fountain pens because most of those are i've Covered them on other parts of the blog, with or, or YouTube, uh, with 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 uh, dedicated video reviews dedicated to each one of those pens. And of course, like since it's like the top five, it's like five pens. It's actually a top five plus one. Um, uh, so that's going to be interesting. And uh, so of course, I can't cover all of those pens in depth, but I'll just uh, want to talk a little bit about them and introduce you to those pens a little bit. Um, so, um, yeah, let's just dive right into things. Scrivelly's top five um, entry level fountain pens plus one. And that is, of course, now my personal recommendations. And I would like to start off with a classic uh, that everyone has probably seen. And that classic comes from Lamy, and it's the Lamy Safari. The Lamy Safari, and I, I want to say all of those pens that I cover here, they lay roughly in the same price range of, let's say, 15 to 25 euro, depending on where and in which country and from which retailer or web shop you get those pens. So I'll start with the Lamy Safari. Um, and the Lamy Safari is a classic uh, entry-level fountain pen, of course, has a very nice uh, iconic design. You'll recognize that pen wherever you see it. It's plastic, has a plastic body. Um, extremely smooth nips i really 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 love the the lamy nips they are extremely smooth give you extremely nice experience and especially if you're new to the fountain pen game and you don't really know where to hold the pen if you, if you're no experience with that you have like a triangular shaped grip section that also helps your fingers to like slip down on onto the nib um that one here is uninked that pen so um it's very easy for you to to find a proper grip um in order to know how to hold the pen has a comfortable size perfect you can write the pen posted if you like to as said iconic design lightweight um, um, you can uh, put a converter into it and use it with bottled ink or you can use it with the proprietary um, Lamy ink cartridges that are available in almost any stationery store so that is number one the Lamy Safari a really nice pen uh, and if you want to sort of like have a change of experience, um, that is still number one. And now those those pens, they are no, in no particular order. So it doesn't mean that because I introduced Lamy first, it means that I like those best. It's just like no, no, no really like random order. Like you, you choose for yourself. So uh, it doesn't mean that now Lamy is my top favorite thing and everything that follows is somehow not as great or whatever. So, but... Um, Another option that is available also in a little bit, high, like maybe a couple of euro, maybe five or euro or so more expensive, is the Lamy AL or Alt All Star. Um, it's essentially the same pen, right? I mean, they look almost the same, uh, slight different, um, slight difference. But um, so while the Safari is plastic, uh, the AL or All Star is made of aluminium which means it's uh it's a little more 
it's a little heavier, so you have a little bit of more weight uh, on your hand. The grip section here is transparent, so you can see a little of the ink coming through the feed here. You see the, the Lamy proprietary ink cartridge that I've injected here, that one here. I don't know why the nib is unmarked. I think it's a medium nib. Um, it's a black nib. Um, so now uh, one nice thing about Lamy's is that all their nibs uh, or nibs of most fountain pens they are like swappable so um, you can just like pull off those nibs and swap in between those two fountain pens. You can get a fine nib, a medium nib and just swap nibs if you like to. So that is also a very smooth rider of course. Lamy nibs are really really great. I really can recommend them. I'm really really a fan of Lamy nibs. Um, also another great entry level fountain pen that is plastic and that one here is aluminium. So we are done with number one, Lamy Safari and Lamy All Star. Let's get to number two and number two is the Pilot MR or Pilot Metropolitan. This is a Japanese fountain pen, um, full metal body, really nice, really sturdy, really stable, snap on cap as well, uh, plastic section. That, that does not have those this grip guide that you find on, on the Lamy pens, um, but it also has uh, some kind of a slight tapering down here. So you will not, um, you will also not, not really easily slide onto the nib while writing as you are still getting used to the grip. Also very comfortable size in the hand. And uh, that pen here takes, if you buy it in Europe, it takes, uh, that is uninked as well, it takes standard international cartridges like the Pelican or whatever cartridges that you get. Um, you, you most often buy them with a medium nib. You see the M here, Pilot M Japan. One thing that you need to be aware of when you buy Pilot MRs is they are Japanese pens, means they have Japanese nibs and Japanese nibs normally run quite a lot finer than European nibs such as the Lamy ones for example. So that means um, I have fine nibs on my Lamy's and I have a medium nib on uh, the Pilot here because the Pilot medium nibs or Japanese medium nibs compare to uh, European fine nibs. So just be aware of that when you get that. So also a snap-on cap that is really also a robust pen. You can just throw that into your pocket or whatever. Super nice writers, um, not too wet, not too dry, cute nib. Um, you have no problems with those ones out of the box. You just like take them and you write with them. And uh, the cool thing is that they're also available in a number of different finishes. So that one here is a part of their, what they call animal collection. Um, this one here is called White Tiger and it's white obviously and it has a tiger pattern around this center band here around the barrel. But then it's also available as, I don't know what, like crocodile, python, leopard, uh, giraffe, you name it. And then they, the crocodile I think is green with a crocodile pattern and so forth. So there's something for everyone. Um, and then there's another series available, which they call the, I think that's quite recent one. They call that the retro pop. So it has those retro patterns around the center band. That one here is now gold with a red, with a floral or gold orange with a floral pattern around going on. Um, but then it's also available in purple and, you know, just go check it out, green, different colors and each color comes with a different uh, themed pattern going on here. But otherwise it's, it's just the same pen, right? So um, that one here is a little bit, uh, the animal collection is a little bit more smooth and uh, the, no, no, yeah, you can see that here, the retro pop collection is a little bit more roughened. So that is maybe also something that you might want to consider. So that one here is shiny and that one here is matte. So that is number two um, of my top five entry level fountain pens, the Pilot MR or Pilot Metropolitan. Also really nice pens in the 15 to 25 euro price range. Number three um, is somewhat different but also entry level and this is the Caveco Sport fountain pens. Um, they are also in the 15 to 25 euro price range. Um, they are also pretty popular. They also have nice nibs, are great writers. Um, you can get, uh, uh, no, I don't get that off here, but like you, you can just slide it on. You get a, you can, can get different clips for those pens here. They have a cute finial, same with the Caveco logo on. This is a little bit also retro style. I, I quite like that octagonal shape of the cap and stuff. 
So one thing that you might want to consider uh, when buying those pens here is that they are pocket pens, which means they are meant as pocket pens, which means you can write with them like that. And I have a bit larger hand, so it works for shorthand notes. But in order to have a really comfortable writer, you might want to write them post-it. And though, like now this is an all plastic pen, also really light, lightweight, nice pen. Um, and um, there are, there are different Caveco Sport models. So what I have here is the Classic Sport and the Classic Sport um, has the Caveco Sport in gold here and the finial is gold and the nib is gold. This is, I believe, a fine nib, extra fine. Um, nice writer, it's, it's a bit, the nib is a little bit on the smaller side. So if we can maybe compare that quickly with uh, a Pilot MR nib. So you see the Pilot nib is, is, is a bit bigger. Um, and uh, the same would happen if I would compare with the Lamy nib. But uh, anyway, um, so you might want to consider that pen as well. Um, you can also fill that with standard international cartridges. That pen is also, oops, also uninked. Um, uh, and, and then there are also like short converters, a squeeze and a short piston converter. So you can also use those, of course, with, uh, with, with, with bottled ink. Um, and uh, as said, they have those pens. It also has like, yeah, a little bit like now that grip section might not really stop you from sliding onto the nib. So the, 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 but like the threads are not sharp and you can pretty much hold that pen. It posts fairly securely. You can hold that pen where, however it's comfortable to you, a little bit more upwards or downwards. I tend to hold it like that. Um, so as said, be aware of the fact that it is a pocket pen and when you write it like that, it might be too small for you. It works for me, not for longer writing sessions, but for some shorthand notes, it's, it's perfectly fine. And um, so this is uh, the classic sport and then they have different ones. I like that comes in, that is white now, but it's available in different other colors, green, blue, red, I don't know what, go check it on the website as well, caveco.com or whatever. And uh, but so now they have the classic sport and then they have also another series which is called ice sport They also look interesting and the ice sport um, is like I don't know looks like an ice cube Maybe like it's a little bit see-through which is kind of cool now. I have that one without a clip That's how the wood pen would look without a clip the clips you get them also in silver and bronze and I don't know what um so it's the same pen, but now the Ice Sport ones, um, they're, they're not gold themed, but silver themed. So the finial here is the same Caveco logo in silver. Um, you have the Caveco Sport here in silver and also the nib is silver. Otherwise, it's the same pen. I also have an extra fine nib on that one. It's the same pocket pen, the same nib, the same pleasant writing experience. Those nibs in comparison to those nibs are a little bit harder. So that is a little bit more of a nail. They, they give you more feedback when writing. Those are really, really smooth writers. Um, with that pen, you get more feedback. They are, oh, they're all steel nibs. All those pens are steel nibs that I'm showing you. So that's a little bit more feedback on those ones, but um, also nice writers. Um, and yeah, since they're like ice sport, like, I don't know, like there's not much uh, orange ink left in that one. I, I, I inked it with with orange ink, um, yeah, you have a little bit of a demonstrator theme thing going on. So you can see a little bit of the interior of the pen. And uh, of course, since this is all plastic, you can convert it with an eyedropper uh, to an eyedropper, meaning you can, instead of using a converter, you can fill that whole barrel here with ink. And uh, then you can really see the ink slushing around in the pen, um, which creates a nice effect. So this is my number three entry level fountain pen, the Caveco Sport series, and you may choose any, the Classic Sport or Ice Sport or whatever. So now the last second pens, they are, so those are the pens that you find more commonly in other recommendations maybe. And now I'll introduce you to two that are not covered that frequently, but I find they are nice entry level fountain pens. Number four is the Nemocene Singularity fountain pen. And what's cool about that fountain pen is that it's a full demonstrator pen. And when you order that pen, you have for, I think, $15, the, it's, it's, it's an American company, so the $15, um, you get a converter and you get six ink cartridges for $15, which is really a cool offer for an entry-level fountain pen. Um, 
for, for that money. And it's it's also a really cool pen. It has this demonstrator thing going theme thing going on. You can it's a screw on cap. Now this was screw on. Those were push on. That's what that was push on. That's a screw on cap. This pen here is very very lightweight. The nib is quite huge. Like if I compare that nib now with a Caveco, you really see a difference. Let me align those. Can you see that? Um, so there's those nibs are quite large. Let me compare it quickly for you to a Lamy Safari nib because they are also quite common. So you have I've seen that as well. So see that? Quite a large nib. I like it. Nice writer as well, of course, also a steel nib. Um, let's have a look at it. Fine nib that I have here. It's a German nib, I don't know, is it a Jovo nib or a Bock nib? I think it's Jovo, but it's also so it's also a German nib, so it's a true fine. Uh, nice feed here. Um, also good for entry level because that section also is slightly tapered. Will also help you a little to not slide onto the nib when writing. This is a pretty lightweight pen, so I prefer like it has also a nice decent size when writing it. Uh, but since it's very, very, very lightweight, really, I mean, it is more lightweight than the Lamy Safari, and that is already a lightweight pen. Um, I really prefer to write that pen posted. Um, so, um, but yeah, um, and all they are also now. This is the, the 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 demonstrator, but they're also like I think they're available in transparent blue and transparent pink, maybe, and then they're also available in. Um, like in, 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 in full plastic bodies like that are not see-through, like in different colors, uh, black or whatever. But you can also check that out on the Nemocene, Nemocene website. Um, Nemocene, that is. Um, yeah, also a cool fountain pen. That is my number four top entry level fountain pen. Let's get to number five. Uh, also a pen that you see around not too often. Um, and that is a Pentel pen. Um, and it's called Tradio, 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 whatever. The pencil, whatever you can read here, um, is a plastic pen. Uh, you can also uncap it like that. Um, it has a quite large plastic section. No, no guidance to, to grab it whatsoever. Um, but since it's a quite large section, you can really try to find your grip the way it's comfortable for you. Um, it's also a quite nice writer. However, I would say it's not as great as all the others. So like, so that is the only pen where I would say when it comes to the writing experience that really ranks on the bottom range of all those. But then again, it's also on the bottom, ra bottom range price. So this is, I believe, the cheapest of all those pens here or the most inexpensive of all those pens. Uh, has also, uh, it's also available in a number of different colors. This is from, I believe, what they call Nature Series. Um, uh, but it's also available in more poppy colors, orange and whatever. You can also post it, post fairly securely. Um, has a little bit of a demonstrator effect going on here, so you can see the nib inside here. Um, I don't know, it's it's not super useful, but it's a, it's a nice little effect. And uh, it also takes standard international ink cartridges, and uh, I have a long uh, standard international ink, cart ink cartridge in that one here. I forgot to talk about that one, that is also standard international. Um, the converter that comes with it, and uh, you can put in started standard international short ink cartridges, um, and you could actually probably also convert that one into an eyedropper. That is, fill the whole barrel with ink, and then you like really have like half a liter of ink with you or whatever. Like, not half a liter, but maybe two or three milliliters. So um, you might also want to consider the Pentel Tradio, plastic lightweight pen. Um, it's definitely a pen or if you have more fountain pens and you need like a, you know, robust note taker, you can just really, that is a robust pen. You can just like throw that into your pocket as well. And if that gets lost, there's not a lot of money lost. And it's, it's an okay writer. Like I'm not, I'm not swept off my feet with the writing experience, but um, it, it's all right. And uh, that one here now has no, no nib marking. It says Iridium Point Pentel, um, but I would say that this is a quite true medium uh, nib. Um, so it, it will write as compared to a Lamy medium, I guess. So those are my top five entry-level fountain pens. 
Lamy Safari All Star, Pilot MR, the Caveco Sport Series, the Nemesis Singularity, or the Pentel Radio. Now, um, brrrm, let's get to the plus one. And uh, the plus one is a pen that I personally like quite a lot. And it's plus one because it is a bit more expensive than those, but it doesn't cost more than I think 35 euro or so. So I would say that if you add 10 euro on any of those, you get that still in a fairly acceptable price range. But since it's a piston filler, I wanted to introduce you also as a plus one to the Twist B Echo or Eco, whatever it is called. So that is a bit more expensive than those, but since it's a piston filler, meaning that you submerge the pen into an ink bottle after you have lowered the piston, uh, and uh, then you suck up ink like that from the ink bottle. Now this whole thing here is full with ink. So if you really want something a bit more fancy or a bit more special, if you want a piston filler, if you add a little bit uh, on money on that, uh, on any of those pens, you get a Twispy Echo piston filler, um, which is kind of cool. And uh, that is not available in so many different colors. There's this white one here, then there's one in black, and they recently re released one that is all clear. Clear cap and uh, clear piston turning knob, and I do sincerely hope to review that one anytime soon on my website. This is all plastic, but manufactured very, very well. Screw on cap. This is a really, really nice pen. I really do enjoy writing with that a lot. And uh, it's, uh, yeah, you can't really see that because the marking sort of disappears down here, the nib marking, but it's an extra fine nib and uh, it's a smooth writer. I, I like that a lot. So um, that was that with the Five plus one, um, top five entry level fountain pens plus one. Um, that was Grivelly and the Essential Fountain Pen Guide. I hope that was helpful to you and I see you next time. Bye bye.